Catherine of Braganza. She was born on the 25th of November, 1638, at the palace of Vila Vecosa in Portugal. She died on the 31st of December, 1705, aged 67, at Bemposta Palace in Lisbon, Portugal. She is buried in the Pantheon of the House of Braganza in Lisbon. Her husband was Charles II of England. Her father was John IV of Portugal. Her mother was Luisa de Guzman. Catherine was born at the Ducal Palace of Vila Vicosa. She was the second surviving daughter of John VIII Duke of Braganza and his wife, Luisa de Guzman. Following the Portuguese Restoration War, her father was acclaimed King John IV of Portugal on the 1st of December, 1640. With her father's new position as one of Europe's most important monarchs, Portugal then possessing a widespread colonial empire, Catherine became a prime choice for a wife for European royalty and she was proposed as a bride for John of Austria, Francis de Vendome, Duke de Beaufort, Louis XIV and Charles II. Catherine enjoyed a happy, contented childhood in her beloved Lisbon. Commonly regarded as the power behind the throne, Queen Louisa was also a devoted mother who took an active interest in her children's upbringing and personally supervised her daughter's education. Catherine is believed to have spent most of her youth in a convent close to the royal palace where she remained under the watchful eye of her protective mother. It appears to have been a very sheltered upbringing, with one contemporary remarking that Catherine hath hardly been ten times out of the palace in her life. Catherine's older sister, Joanna, Princess of Bera, died in 1653, leaving Catherine as the eldest surviving child of her parents. Negotiations for her marriage began during the reign of King Charles I and were renewed immediately after the Restoration. On the 23rd of June 1661, in spite of Spanish opposition, the marriage contract was signed. Catherine departed Lisbon from the Palace Square on the 23rd of April 1662. On the 30th of September 1662, the married couple entered London as part of a large procession, which included the Portuguese delegation and many members of the court. There were also minstrels and musicians, among them 10 playing shawns and 12 playing Portuguese bagpipes those being the new queen's favourite instrument. Catherine possessed several good qualities, but had been brought up sheltered and secluded from the world, and was scarcely a wife Charles would have chosen for himself. Her mother-in-law, the Queen Mother, was pleased with her, and wrote in her diary that, she is the best creature in the world, from whom I have so much affection. I have the joy to see the king love her extremely. She is a saint. In reality, Catherine's personal charms 
were not potent enough to wean Charles away from the society of his mistresses. And in a few weeks after her arrival, she became aware of her painful and humiliating position as the wife of a licentious king. Little is known of Catherine's own thoughts on the match. While her mother plotted to secure an alliance with England and thus support in Portugal's fight for independence, and her future husband celebrated his restoration by dallying with his mistresses, Catherine's time had been spent in the sombre seclusion of her convent home with little opportunity for fun nor frivolity. Even outside her actions were governed by the strict etiquette of the Royal Court of Portugal. By all accounts, Catherine grew into a quiet, even-tempered young woman. Catherine became pregnant and miscarried at least three times and during a severe illness in 1663, she imagined for a time that she had given birth. Charles comforted her by telling her she had indeed given birth to two sons and a daughter. Her position was a difficult one and though Charles continued to have children, at least 21, by his many mistresses, he insisted Catherine be treated with the utmost respect and sided with her against his mistresses when he felt she was not receiving the respect she was due. After the three miscarriages, it seems to be more and more unlikely that the Queen would bear an heir. Royal advisers urged the monarch to seek a divorce, hoping that the new wife would be a Protestant and fertile, but Charles refused. This eventually led to her being made a target by courtiers. Throughout her reign, Charles firmly dismissed the idea of divorcing Catherine and she remained faithful to Charles throughout their marriage. Catherine was not a particularly popular choice of Queen since she was Roman Catholic as Roman Catholics were forbidden to take part in Anglican services. She initially faced hardships due to the language barrier, the king's infidelities and the political conflicts between Roman Catholics and Anglicans. Over time, her quiet decorum, loyalty and genuine affection for Charles changed the public's perspective of her. Although her difficulties with the English language persisted, as time went on, the once rigidly formal Portuguese Infanta mellowed and began to enjoy some of the more innocent pleasures of the court. She loved to play cards and shocked devout Protestants by playing on Sundays. She enjoyed dancing and took great delight in organising masks. She had a great love for the countryside and picnics. Fishing and archery were also favourite pastimes. In a far cry from her convent days, the newly liberated Catherine displayed a fondness for the recent trend of court ladies wearing men's clothes which showed off her legs and ankles and she was even reported to have considered leading the way in wearing shorter dresses which would show off her feet. Catherine fainted when Charles's official mistress Barbara Palmer was presented to her. Charles insisted on making Barbara Catherine's lady of the bedchamber. After the incident, Catherine withdrew from spending time with the king, declaring she would return to Portugal rather than openly accept the arrangement with Barbara Palmer. Charles then dismissed nearly all of the members of Catherine's Portuguese retinue, after which she stopped actively resisting, which pleased the king. 
However, she participated very little in court life and activities after this time. In England, tea was used medicinally. In contrast, she drank it often and likely influenced members of her court to do the same. Catherine's fondness quickly made it fashionable in England, first for the ladies of the court and gradually there was further removed from royal life developed a liking for the drink. It was generally drunk in the company of female friends, within a bedchamber or closet, a small room for entertaining guests near the bedchamber. Though known to keep her faith private, her religion and proximity to the king made her the target of anti-Catholic sentiment. Catherine occupied herself with her faith. Her piety was widely known and was a characteristic in his wife that the king greatly admired. In 1675, the stress of a possible revival of the divorce project indirectly led to another illness which Catherine's physicians claimed and her husband cannot fail to have noticed was due more to mental than physical causes. In the same year, all Irish and English Catholic priests were ordered to leave the country, which left Catherine dependent upon foreign priests. One consolation was that Louise, Duchess of Portsmouth, who replaced Barbara Palmer as reigning mistress, always treated the Queen with the proper respect. The Queen, in return, showed her gratitude by using her own influence to protect Louise during the Popish plot. The Test Act of 1673 had driven all Catholics out of public office and anti-Catholic feelings intensified in the years to come. Although she was not active in religious politics, in 1675, Catherine was criticised for supposedly supporting the idea as appointing a bishop to England, who it was hoped would resolve the internal disputes of Catholics. Critics also noted the fact that Despite orders to the contrary, English Catholics attended her private chapel. As the highest ranking Catholic in the country, Catherine was an obvious target for Protestant extremists. It was hardly surprising that the Popish plot of 1678 would directly threaten her position. However, Catherine was completely secure in her husband's favour. She could never do anything wicked and it would be a horrible thing to abandon her, he told Gilbert Bernay and the House of Lords, most of whom knew her and liked her, refused by an overwhelming majority to impeach her. Relations between the royal couple became notably warmer and it was noted that his visits to her quarters became longer and more frequent. At Charles's final illness in 1685, she showed anxiety for his reconciliation with the Roman Catholic faith and she exhibited great grief at his death. When he lay dying, he asked for Catherine, but she sent a message asking that her presence be excused and to beg his pardon if she had offended him all his life. He answered, alas, poor woman, she asks for my pardon. I beg hers with all my heart. Take her back that answer. Later in the same year, she unsuccessfully interceded with King James II for the life of James Scott, 1st Duke of Monmouth, Charles's illegitimate son and leader of the Monmouth Rebellion. Even though Monmouth in Rebellion had called upon the support 
represented by the staunch Protestants opposed to the Catholic Church. Catherine's fondness for money is one of the more unexpected features of her character. Her brother-in-law James, who was himself notably avaricious, remarked that she always drove a hard bargain. She remained in England, living at Somerset House, through the reign of James and his deposition in the Glorious Revolution by William III and Mary II. Initially on good terms with William and Mary, her position deteriorated as the practice of her religion led to misunderstandings and increasing isolation. A bill was introduced to Parliament to limit the number of Catherine's servants and she was warned not to agitate against the government. She finally returned to Portugal in March 1692 and she died at Bemposta Palace in Lisbon on the 31st of December 1705. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.